Yo, 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 welcome to Hard Pass. I am your host, Jacques Slade. It's the show that loves it when Nick fans escalate things. We're asking you just kindly that we'd like to cover it up. We're offering you a free shirt to do so. Again, we get to stipulate here what is, this is not, we're not the government. So this is not a freedom of speech situation. We get to determine what is offensive. We don't allow offensive signs. We don't allow offensive material. And this, in our eyes, we would consider this to be offensive. Dude, know the room. You're dealing with the lead singer of JD and the Straight Shot. Play petty games, win petty prizes like getting kicked out of the Madison Square Garden and not getting a refund. Good thing we 17-time world champion Los Angeles Laker fans have never, ever been that bad as a team. My God. Let's start with some hot takes. Props to Luka Doncic, the young superstar and Jordan brand athlete, gifted pairs of the Air Jordan 1 to vaccination workers in Dallas. Very cool of Luka and Jordan brand to do that, even if there are some clowns on Twitter saying it's not really that cool since they're just mids and lows. <sighs> Can you guys never be happy? If Luca had given away Trophy Room 1s, you would have been mad that those pairs should have been sold on sneakers or that those workers will just resell them. If they were Zoom Jordan 1s or the MA2, you would have said they're not real Jays. Can the internet not be a cesspool just one time? Is that too much to ask? Like everybody else, I have a bad habit of doom scrolling through Twitter several times a day when I came across a thread of League Fit posts that opened my eyes. It was your typical night with guys across the league rocking the week's best kicks with pants that are way too tight for me to ever try myself. But along with those fits were other dudes wearing baggy pants. Wait, has the pendulum swung back so hard that baggy pants are cool again? Do I need to get my box of early 2000s baggy jeans in storage? Pretty sure I could make like a dozen pair of denim fours with echo jeans with the amount of material they came with. But are we feeling this trend? Man, I, man, I don't know, but hey, Fashion is a flat circle or whatever it is that Matthew McConaughey likes to say, you know, all right, all right, all right. Uh, Bryson DeChambeau just became the first golfer to drop an NFT trading card because of course he is. Congrats, I guess. But let me know when I can buy a gif of jumping Phil Mickelson or a Brooks Kepka tweet clowning Bryson with his four major trophies. I already know I can't afford a hypothetical Tiger Woods NFT unless I sell everything in this studio and in my storage unit. Draymond Green claims he is the greatest defender in the history of the NBA. Okay, now I want to buy that tweet as an NFT. In this week's edition of Seriously, don't test old NBA guys at the gym because you're just gonna look like an idiot, Brian Scalabrini destroyed a high school kid who probably thought he had a chance against the former Celtic and NBA champion. White Mamba proceeded to wreck the kid 11 to zero because he's relatively young and not that far removed from playing in the best basketball league in the world. Look, there's nothing wrong with having confidence and thinking you can take on an NBA player, but the worst NBA player you can think of is still gonna be running circles around your crew at LA Fitness. And especially guys like Scalabrini who have a chip on their shoulder because Jim Bros thinks he's a bum. That kid might not even be the first one that tried him that day. I mean. I don't think I could take Scalabrini, and I can dunk. Damn it. I knew this was a bit set up by my co-writer to play that clip. Now people are gonna try me at the gym, whenever gyms are actually open again. Shout out to Alexis Ohanian on the Bill Simmons podcast. The Reddit founder revealed that during the great sports card boom of the past year and a half, he admitted to being one that was buying up the rookie cards of his wife, Serena Williams, AKA the goat of tennis. Like a good husband, I'm like, I gotta start, I gotta start buying my wife's cards. Those kits were very valuable to pick up because it was Rafa's rookie card, Roger's rookie card, and Serena and Venus's. Co-writer, always looking to make a quick buck when he really should be working on this show, planned to buy Serena cards for cheap, but was shocked to find out that they were selling for so much. And even though I pay him more than a reasonable amount, he can't afford to compete with Serena's husband, who also happens to be a pretty rich guy himself. So. Yeah, thanks, Alexis. You made co-writer's life miserable for about a week, and I appreciate that more than you can ever know. And just so you have an idea about how much tennis cards have blown up, a $20 50-card box set by Topps that includes a Naomi Osaka rookie card is now worth around $1,000. That same Osaka card graded PSA 9, over $3,000. This past week, one of, if not the biggest sneaker release around Air Max Day was the Nike Air Max 90 Bacon, a retro of a 2004 collab with artist Dave Ortiz and his skate shop Dave Quality Meats, aka DQM. 
That story behind the shoe is really the stuff of legend, like how Ortiz procrastinated until the last day to design the shoes, how they were not a huge deal when they first dropped, but grew to become a cult favorite over time, and how he did not take the project super seriously because they're just sneakers. Well, fast forward to 2021, and the Bacon 90s are getting a retro and a spotlight on Air Max Day, complete with a gag tweet from none other than Kevin Bacon himself. But there is some talk of the old sneakerhead Twitter that Ortiz will not be getting paid for the retro, evidenced by the lack of mention of him or DQM on any marketing materials for the release. On the Complex Sneakers podcast, Ortiz mentioned that he was approached by Nike about a retro and he gave his blessing, probably because he still doesn't take this stuff seriously. But it does open things up for discussion. Should Nike feel an obligation to pay Ortiz whether he asks for it or not? And should they acknowledge the history of the shoe beyond just saying it first came out in 2004? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. So LaMelo Ball is the rookie of the year. He may not be the NBA rookie of the year, but he is the hard pass rookie of the year, which is a fictional award that we just made up right now for the purpose of this segment. If he is unable to return from a fractured right wrist this season, he will have played 41 of 72 possible games around 57%. That might not be enough for the media or NBA Twitter, but it's more than enough for me. There's a slight hope that he could come back if the Hornets hang around and get a playoff spot, but if I were Michael Jordan, well, first of all, if I were Michael Jordan, I would tell Marcus he's on timeout. Second, I would make Jordan 1's general releases that are always in stock. And third, I would start a group text with Charles Barkley, Carl Malone, John Stockton, Patrick Ewan, Dominique Wilkins, that shooting guard from Indiana, and everybody else that I prevented from winning a championship and just send them pictures of my rings every day. Oh, and I'd probably clown Malone for having an Android because he just seems like that type of guy. Sorry, dreaming here. Where was I? The Mellow. If I were Michael Jordan, I would shut down Ball for the rest of the season, even if he did have a chance to come back. MJ has been at this ownership thing for a while now, and he finally has a diamond to build around. He should do everything in his power to keep him safe and healthy and ready for next season, which will likely be the first time Charlotte fans will be able to pack their arena to see LaMelo. While other rookies like Anthony Edwards have shown they have the game and the highlights to be a star in this league, LaMelo brings the intangibles that fans love to see and sneaker brands love to capture. There's a joy watching him finally play with NBA players who are on and above his level. In the past, we would see him light up his opponents in high school or in his dad's make-believe league or in Australia. That's fine and all, but what about how he would do in the NBA? Turns out he was pretty good all along, showing off the court vision and the joy that has been missing this season. For me, watching LaMelo was like watching guys like Jason Kidd or Jason Williams for the first time. I mean, LaVar actually nailed it when he compared LaMelo to a young Penny Hardaway. And if I'm Michael Jordan, I'm looking at what happened to old Penny Hardaway and keeping Ball sealed in a bubble until November 2021. As for Puma, they would love to have a player on Penny Hardaway's level on their roster. For maybe two or three years there in the 90s, Penny's popularity was second only to MJ. And Nike was pushing his Air Penny signature line like it was the next big thing. While we don't have any sales numbers, obviously, to look at, I wouldn't be surprised if Puma moved more pairs of the Puma Client All Pro and the RS Dreamer because LaMelo was frequently shown rocking them. His Panini rookie cards are headed to the moon, and I may or may not have several safe searches on eBay looking for steals as we record this. So get well soon, LaMelo. We'll be watching very nervously, but we'll definitely be watching. All right, let's rock on with the heat check where we bring you everything that's dropping this week. We have the women's Nike Dunk Low Yukon on March 29th for $100. Uh, we did this already a few weeks ago, so I guess we're back to dunks getting delayed again. Yay. We have the Nike Dunk Low Medium Curry on the 29th for $110. How much more of these do we have to go? I'm starting to get hungry and we can't be having curry talk while I'm hungry. The Nike Air Structure OG on March 30th for $120. Celebrating its 30th anniversary is this classic Nike silhouette that was a favorite among the older sneakerheads. I wonder if this one will spark a renewed interest in the model or if it'll fade away and Nike will just try again when it turns 40 in 2031. Air Droid 9 changed the world. March 31st, $190. Yet another pair that was delayed but will hopefully drop this week. The first women's exclusive 9 features multicolor and mismatching uppers that also feature the change the world message on the heel tab. Kermit 
the Frog, Adidas Stan Smith on April 1st for $90. Part of a larger collection that includes other properties like Disney, Star Wars, and Marvel, this Kermit Stan Smith is also the first to use repurposed materials and a recycled rubber outsole. Adidas Dame 7, Fire Inside, April 2nd for $110. How these don't have some sort of cosign from a hot sauce brand is beyond me. But man, props to Dame for keeping that $110 price tag from the jump. Seven signature shoes in and we haven't seen dramatic price jumps or drops. Just consistent greatness from Dame. The Adidas Dawn issue number two. This is on April 2nd for $100. There's no official nickname for these, but the inspirations appear to be drawn from fine china with white and blue colors complemented by art of Kumo clouds and dragons. Nike Cosmic Unity Space Hippie April 2nd for $150. Reminiscent of the Nike Space Hippie collection that dropped last year, the instantly iconic gray, light blue, and orange style looks even better on this sustainable basketball shoe. Nike Air Foam Posit 1 All Star April 3rd for $230. There's way too many delayed pairs this week, Nike. Come on, get the shipping right. Nike Air Tune Max Dark Charcoal April 3rd for $170. Another blast from the past. I honestly don't have memories of this pair when it first came out, but now that I see it, I now totally understand what Kanye's real inspirations are. Air Jordan 12 Low, Easter, April 3rd for $190. The Jordan 12 Low has slowly been creeping back into our lives, and next up is this pair that celebrates Easter. It's a little too plain for my taste, but then again, I wouldn't want the pendulum to swing all the way to the other side when Nike basketball would drop kicks during this time of year. I have enough minty green sneakers from that area to last me a lifetime. Thank you very much. And then my pick of the week is the Adidas Yeezy Desert Boot, Taupe or Top blue on March 29th. According to Honker, the French word taupe is to be the color of a mole, which originally reduced it to a limited range of grays and browns. However, it has expanded in modern times to include most warm grays, lavender browns, or any warm mixture of gray or brown with a soft pastel, especially pink, yellow, or occasionally green. It is amazingly versatile and pairs as well with a cool palette like blue or blue violet. All right, and now for a heat check on Kanye West, the $6.6 billion man, or wait, is he the $1.8 billion man? Does it really matter? I mean, of course it matters to Kanye. He's obsessed with those numbers, and there's probably things he can do with $6.6 .6 billion that he can't do with $1.8 billion, but when you're in that bracket, you're doing okay for yourself. Although, for the day or so when Kanye was worth $6.6 .6 billion, the Kanye stands were in full force acting like they were worth $6.6 .6 billion. Anyways, if I'm editor-in-chief of Bloomberg or Forbes, who I guess Ye has on speed dial for moments like this, I would tell my people to stay out of the guess how much Kanye is worth using funny math game. Everybody not named Kanye is a little too invested. I'm just saying. Anyways, this heat check is less about Kanye's net worth and more about his worth as a provider of Yeezys to us. Now, as of this recording, I can still buy a pair of the Adidas Yeezy Boost 380 Cove Light for $230 in the size 11 on the Adidas Confirmed app. Well, at least I think I can buy a pair because it takes me all the way to check out before I close the app. Now, this is the part where you wonder if Hard Pass has the budget to buy Yeezys just for the sake of showing you a screenshot saying that we did indeed got them. The answer is hell no. Watch more videos, bring our numbers up first, then we'll talk about that. But this is the future of Yeezys that Kanye was talking about. He finally did it. He normalized Yeezys. We can now, with minimal effort, buy Yeezys at any time on the Adidas app, and I'm guessing at original stores throughout the country. Sure, there were a few pairs of the three 50s and the 700s that actually lasted a week or so in store for retail pricing, but those Cove lights are going the distance. In Jordan retro terms, 350s are like Air Jordan 1s and 11s. 700s are like Jordan 3s and 6s. 380s are like Jordan 12s and 13s. Unless they are OG colorway, general release 12 and 13s sit on shelves for a long time. And that is something I do care about when it comes to Kanye. For years, he has been saying Yeezys for everybody. He can make all the colors of the 350s in the world, but if they sell out instantly, or within a few days, that promise doesn't mean squat. But as he approaches this brave new world with the gap, the surprising mainstream appeal of his foam runners, and the improving infrastructure of the Adidas app, the 1.8 billion number seems fine and the 6.6 .6 billion dollar could happen in the future. Not only that, we're able to talk about Kanye in just a sneaker context, and that feels great. Granted, all I had to do was mute about 100 different words, brands, and people that have an even tangential relation to Ye to get there, but even I am currently okay okay with talking about Yeezys. That currently is doing a lot of work in that sentence. Anyways, I give the state of Yeezys a perfect $1.8 billion out of $6.6 .6 billion. Does the math make sense? Nope. But neither is Bloomberg or Forbes math, so anything goes, man. It's time for this week's Hard Pass, where we take a look at something in the culture that just needs to go, like discounting the digital future. Look, 
Nobody knows what the future of NFTs and digital goods are going to be 10, 20, or 50 years from now. Sure, there are people who like to think they know and are treating them like investments, but as somebody who has lived through other boom periods and other industries, life can come at you fast. Hey, more power to the people who want to spend that money. Personally, I'm just biding my time and waiting for the right opportunity myself, but I'm also trying not to jump in when I feel like the bubble is getting close to the sun and the heat is hot enough that I can't walk away from it in 30 seconds or less. Or wait, I, I watched Heat last night and I think that was a De Niro quote from the movie. God, that, that was terrible. Anyway, just be careful spending your stymies, y'all. That's what I'm trying to say. Back to the future of digital goods and in many ways, digital hype. We're starting to see the think pieces about how digital sneakers are the future because of, well, convenience. Why bother accumulating a real world collection of sneakers that takes up space in your house when all you really care about is flexing in the digital space? That's where crypto sneakers and other crackpot schemes can come in. Even we have started invading that space on hard pass. Just last week, we talked about our hypothetical deep fake sneakers idea and how that could help curtail some, if not most, of the perpetual clout chasers. And while Co-Rider is in the process of filing that patent and developing that app to sell to some crypto kitty billionaire, there is another lane where digital sneakers could become the future. Last week, Burberry announced that they will be designing character skins for the game Honor of Kings, also known as Arena of Valor here in the US. Honor of Kings is one of the biggest games in China, played by an average of 100 million people daily on their mobile devices. The character Yao will get a specially designed skin that was created by Ricardo Tichi, chief creative officer at Burberry. Sneakerheads might remember Tichi for his Nike Air Force One collaborations from a few years ago. Uh, remember when Air Force Ones were where the dunks are right now? Huh. Just say, dunk fans, nothing is forever. Look, it's not the first time a luxury brand has teamed up with a popular gaming franchise. Louis Vuitton has designed gear for League of Legends and in a bit of a role reversal, Final Fantasy XIII protagonist Lightning has modeled LV collections on digital runways. Gucci even recently got in the game, so to speak, when they developed their first ever sneaker design exclusively for the digital space, the Virtual 25. Priced at $17.99, you can try on the shoe via the Gucci app and transfer the shoe onto your virtual avatar in VR chat, yet another popular online game in Roblox, your nephew you and niece's favorite game. While the Virtual 25 is, let's be honest, pretty hideous and very low res compared to a sneaker you might find in NBA 2K, the ability to buy a digital Louis Vuitton sneaker without dealing with crypto bros sounds pretty enticing, especially since you can move the shoe from one game to another. But what if Louis Vuitton could expand that idea? Could they team up with 2K and bring those sneakers and other shoes into NBA 2K? Sure, PC gamers could just mod those same shoes, but console gamers who don't want to deal with all of that hassle can just pay the nominal fee. Like, if you're a popular Twitch streamer who plays multiple games and you wanted to flex your digital feet, would you pay Nike 20 bucks to have a digital Travis Scott Fragment Air Jordan 1 ready to wear in Fall Guys, The New Resident Evil, or Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2? Granted, the idea that Nintendo would ever allow something like this high concept onto their platforms is bonkers, but... It's not out of the realm of possibility that you can bring your digital sneaker collection to a game like Yakuza or Hitman. Sure, you can dress up Agent 47 as Florida Man, so it's not impossible to think of a Hypebeast costume for him that also gives you the option to transfer the off-white dunks you had on in GTA. While older sneakerheads would probably say those who are true to the game would never be caught wearing the same hype pair twice, I think this younger generation couldn't give a damn about that. If there was a space in your Twitter profile picture to add digital badges that you had to pay for, you better believe someone will buy them, especially if they are designed by a Dior or Hermes. While the Gucci Virtual 25 doesn't bother with NFTs, Wana, the fashion tech company that helped Gucci develop the shoe, thinks that in the near future, fashion brands will start to notice that a sizable piece of their profits will come from digital goods. That's a wild future to think about but I can see it. If you're a gamer with a passion for fashion, but lack the funds of a popular streamer or celebrity, $17.99 for authentic digital Gucci sneakers that you can take from game to game doesn't sound like a bad deal. I'll be over here hoping that by the time we get a Yakuza Like a Dragon sequel, Ichiban will step out of those ugly loafers and into some Jordan ones that I bought in 2K. All right. That's going to do it for the show. Thank you guys for watching Hard Pass. I am Jacques Slade. I will see you next week, but not before I show you how one teacher didn't give up on making sure his kids felt special as they got back to school. Yeah. Okay.
I'll see you next week. Peace.